Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I, a new turn-based World War I strategy game out by Fury Software and published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. This is part 11 of our Let's Play series, where we are playing as the Central Powers. So far, the war's going pretty well. We've destroyed a huge portion of the Russian fleet near Warsaw, we've taken Warsaw, and we're now driving east on the Russian front. Meanwhile, in the Balkans, we have conquered Serbia, Albania, and Montenegro. The Bulgarians and the Ottomans have joined the war on the side of the Central Powers. The Italians have just declared war on the Central Powers, but now that the Balkans are secure, we are shifting a large number of our forces uh, into the sort of mountainous areas near Italy uh, to hold the line there. Meanwhile, on the Western Front, the British and French have attacked through Belgium. Yes, they attacked through Belgium, which has triggered the Belgian government to join the war on the side of the Central Powers. The Belgians have been hanging out and surviving for a while, uh, although I can't imagine they'll be able to survive for much longer. And in the North Sea, we have been moving the German High Seas Fleet, looking for a battle with the Royal Navy, although we have not found it. That might change this turn. But that's enough of me talking. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to the live stream audio and the gameplay from the live stream and let you guys pick things up where we left off at the end of our last episode. Hope you guys enjoy. Catch you guys at the end. All right. One to four for this detachment to the east or to the west, Brest Litovsk. All right. So we destroyed them. That should make surrounding. Press the task that much easier. These Bulgarian troops will attack the Russian corps up here. One to one. There we go. Another Russian corps destroyed. These guys are going to move over here. I think we'll leave the garrison back here. Evangrod will reinforce these guys. Meanwhile, we're threatening to surround Brest Litovsk as well. We move these guys, so we'll reinf we didn't move all of these troops, so we'll reinforce the ones who are stationary. Get them up to full strength as we continue the summer offensive against the Russians. Get these guys onto a rail line, so we can rail them probably to the western front. Alright, so Kovno is surrounded... So their, su their supply situation should get worse. Vilnia is, meanwhile, might actually be effectively surrounded as well with these troops along the rail line here. So another we could be forming another pocket of five more Russian troops near Vilnia if they don't withdraw. Meanwhile, at least Kovno is surrounded, so that's a total of six more Russian units are surrounded. They still have troops on the border with Austria-Hungary. That seems silly. Why would you do that? One to four. Got him! Another Russian unit destroyed here. Do we cut their entrenchment down if we fire artillery at them? No, but we do hurt their morale. I don't think it actually has that much effect. Let's 
Got him. All right, so we just destroyed another core near Koval. Meanwhile, we'll have these troops fall back. So the Russians started, I think, at 30, 54 units. They're down to 48. So six more units and another national morale center is, uh, is lost for the Russians. Okay. Meanwhile, we detected the British fleet. At least some of it. Let's bring our other subs down here and see how many ships there are here. There's at least three enemy warships here, but that doesn't actually feel like that many. We can get a 0 to 3 against a British light cruiser there. I'll do it. 0 to 2. Okay. So, I'm not sure can our seaplane tender, how do I use this guy? Recon. So how do I use him? Do I just right click? No, how? No. So how, I don't know how to, I don't want to cruise him. I want him to use his goddamn seaplanes. Hey Blix, glad you're uh, enjoying or glad you're here. All right, so the Royal Navy over there. All right, that destroyer is kind of checking out the channel. Meanwhile, we lost another sub over there. So we have Admiral Betty, maybe not. We have a pre-dreadnought a Tiger class battle cruiser and an Iron Duke dreadnought, all way out in advance of the rest of the British fleet, all kind of chilling out here on their own. So my goal, and I don't know how to do it, I guess I'll set convoy mode and bomb. I don't know if they're actually going to be able to. Really, two to one? I mean, any damage you can do against an enemy battleship, I will take. So we're going to move the seaplane tender back into port. We're going to move our Rhineland-class dreadnoughts forward here to deal with this enemy pre-dreadnought. Ow. Oh, nice. We evaded damage. So it said we were going to take up to five damage, but we evaded all damage. So we destroyed that enemy pre-dreadnought. We lost three hit points. Meanwhile, I think we're going to go against the Iron Duke now with the Koenig Albert. Can this guy reach over there? Not really. I really should have uh, used him first. Um, yeah, so we use the Koenig Albert against the Iron Duke. Six to six, it says. We only lost two, though. Man, these predictions are proving disastrously wrong. Our destroyers will try and beat him up, too. We've actually driven him east, so with those destroyers driving him east... Actually, let's move these guys in here. Go ahead and attack there. Drive him east further. We'll move our armored cruiser, or pre-dreadnought the Kaiser Wilhelm, in here. That was pretty bad. We lost quite a bit of damage there. The rune to engage. Probably not the most effective use of my minor ships here. But I want to try and destroy this entire little segment of the British Navy. So we're going to have to put our destroyers in front to shield these damaged ones. Meanwhile, we're going to move the first... Or actually, we're going to move the Koenig Dreadnought over here to deal with the Tiger-class battlecruisers. Seven to four. 
I'll take that exchange. And the Derflinger can go ahead and finish it off. Nice! Very good result for our fleet. Now the question is whether the British have a lot of like naval units nearby that might come and rescue them or come... I guess... after us. I don't know if there's like any hard coding to be like, don't go too close to the German shorelines or what. They've got a bunch of cruisers and stuff up north here. Just depends if they try and come down on the Kaiser Wilhelm or any of the other pre-dreadnought ships we've got in the area. To make a move at Heligoland Bight. But that was a very good victory for us. Am I winning the sea? I don't know. I mean, I would say no in the sense that the Royal Navy is far stronger than us. 31 to 26 is the current breakout, but that was a pretty big battle there. We just sank a battle cruiser, a dreadnought, and didn't we sink a third ship? I don't even remember what we sank, but that was like that was like the battle of Jutland if the Germans didn't lose anything. Basically. Oh yeah, pre-dread. So yeah, that was basically like the battle of Jutland if the Germans had not lost any casualties. It was a pretty good result, I would say. Don't mind me saying so myself. All right. One to four. Well, that didn't quite go as I had hoped. There we go. Shattered them. Okay, meanwhile, two to five, I will gladly take that. Pull these guys back, move these guys in here, destroy another French Corps. Okay, so two French Corps destroyed this turn in the north. I don't know if Belgium surrenders, if there's any, like... Maybe I shouldn't have pulled them out of Antwerp. If Belgium surrenders, I'm guessing all their troops surrender, too. One to four? I'll gladly do that. A third French Corps destroyed this turn. Okay. Reinforce these guys in the south. And I'm, I destroyed three French corps, but you'll notice with, with one exception being the uh, King Albert headquarters unit here. Actually, wait a minute. Could I... can't operate them to Antwerp because the rail line passes through the Netherlands. Damn it! Anyway. Um, yeah, so with no... I destroyed these two French corps down... Or one French corps here. I destroyed two up here. And with all... With no exceptions. Well, I, I guess with one exception. I didn't advance into the territory that was taken. So I didn't expose myself to any serious counterattacks while also preparing for uh, success. And so those French casualties should hurt their national morale effort. We take a look at the reports. The French have 31 ground units. The British actually have more ground units at 35. I'm not sure how many of those are, like, strong ground units. Meanwhile, this 8th Austro-Hungarian Corps will move into the mountains and... Oh, shit. I faced my trenches the wrong way. I don't think it matters... But I did. Uh, we're going to shift these troops here. 
ship these troops around, I guess. So we'll advance these troops into Italy. At Undine. We'll actually attack there. We'll attack with that unit. Uh, no damage done. Alright, so I got a little bit aggressive. Did attack the troops at Undine, but we inflicted some reasonable reasonable casualties on them. Um, meanwhile, these troops... Alright, so... Partisans at Belgrade, which we're just gonna operate this headquarter unit to the Italian front, I think, as well. Move these guys up to Belgrade, or adjacent to Belgrade. Move this unit to Pristana, so that should get rid of all of those operatives. Meanwhile, we'll move this Austro-Hungarian Corps to the front here. So we're going to try and replace as many of these partial sections as we can. To make the Italian front as strong as possible. You know, these guys are going to reinforce. The troops that don't have to move this turn won't. So we'll leave three cores on the border with Greece just in case. Two detachments in Serbia to keep the population down. And we'll move the rest of these troops away. Yeah, I don't know if it's... I, it's really going to be hard to tell. Yeah, the Grand Fleet may show up when we least expect it. I'm just hoping the fact that we're... I mean, I can lay mines. So that's the other thing. We've got three minefields we can lay. So we'll lay these minefields. Maybe that'll make it more difficult for them... Uh... to come upon us. So we're going to kind of have a little bit of a minefield shield. We must not allow a minefield gap. Now we can move these destroyers north take, to take the pressure off, I think. So we've got a little bit of a shield of mines against the enemy advance, as well as subs. I probably would be better off putting mines in the neutral shipping zones. But that would also risk bringing the Americans down on us, which I'd prefer to avoid. Meanwhile, we know there's British shipping or subs up here operating against our Norwegian convoy. I won't forget about the Black Sea. I'm just making sure we're good elsewhere. So I think the Italian front is relatively secure. For the moment, anyway. Um... The Western Front, likewise, seems relatively secure. And the Eastern Front seems relatively secure. We're going to lose Antwerp and Belgium. That'll hurt our morale, but it actually shortens our front. None of our German troops are up here are going to be hurt by it. The Russian Front, I think we already concluded for this turn. brest and Vilnia are our next two targets to crush Russian national morale, which is down below 50%. The Ottoman front, meanwhile, trying to get our headquarter unit forward is a little bit difficult. Entrench on three sides. these guys on three sides. Move these guys here. We'll just try doing the one side, I guess. See if it's a better entrenchment. 
I would imagine it shortens your front and makes you more more deadly, I would think. So maybe it is better to have a shorter entrenchment. So we can I mean we can experiment with that. Now obviously the risk is if you if you only have if you have a shorter entrenchment, the risk is that the enemy can get around your flank. I'm assuming the three-sided entrenchment matters, otherwise why else would it be in the game? All right, we're going to move here. Next turn we'll move him here and solidify our front in the Caucasus. Meanwhile, the Russian Black Sea fleet enemy subs. So we did detect an enemy submarine in this area. I can't actually get the fleet over there. They're out of range. Um. Meanwhile, we'll sail along. The Italian fleet has been detected. Two pre-dreadnought ships, a light cruiser is down here. I'm going to move my fleet into range to strike at them in the next few turns. Although our fleet's been too damaged. I'm really thinking we should move. I don't know. I want to strike at the Russian. Actually, you know what we should do? The Russian fleet is all, is likely based out of Sevastopol, or Sevastopol. So if we move our fleet over here, we're going to reduce Sevastopol's supply. And maybe prompt an engagement with the Soviet Black Sea Fleet? I'm just assuming that we're stronger than it. I don't know that for a fact. That could be a rude awakening for us. But if I can destroy the Russian Black Sea Fleet, then I can switch the entire Ottoman fleet to help the Austrians out against the Italians. But yeah, we can't attack these guys quite yet. Okay. Yeah, though I guess the one risk is that they torpedo us. But the way the way subs work, they're not going to sink you in one shot. Okay. Right, interceptors, we've got some air battles! Woo! No interceptors there. Alright, so... Germany still has 380 points. I'm so glad we wasted that diplomacy on Italy. That's 600 MPPs. That, those are... I don't even know who we try. Like, we could try and prevent Portugal from going to war with us. We could try and convince the Netherlands to join us. But the Netherlands joining us would actually rob us of 65 income that we're bringing through the Netherlands. I don't really want Norway. That's just another front to deal with. I don't want anyone to join us. Maybe Romania would be nice to not go against us. And apparently that only costs 50 MPPs. So I guess we can go ahead and make sure we spend points convert convincing Romania to stay away from us. That's probably a sound investment, even at our entire income availability of this turn. All five of our diplomatic chits. I really don't want Sweden, Switzerland, Spain. Spain might be a fun thing to just distract the French to have them have a two-front war. But honestly, right now, I don't want the war to expand. The only country that I might want to, you know, obviously is prevent the U.S. from joining. But the U.S. is nowhere near joining right now. 
And so I guess we could just try and convince the Romanians. I don't even know if they can if they could join us in the war. That would be great. So I'm going to spend all my income pretty much trying to convince the Romanians to join us. We've got a 40% chance of success of swinging them in a direction. Um... Pull these guys back, move these guys in. There we go, we just destroyed a British garrison here. Oh no, that was disastrously stupid. We're gonna get this core destroyed. Joy, joy. I don't think the U.S. will ever join the Central Powers, but you can delay their entry in the war against you. Alright, so we've got these guys here. These guys here. So the only potential uh, partisan area still is Hal Halil. Which we probably have some units we can... Can we rail... We could rail reinforcements to the front here. So we may rail a core to this entrenchment line here. These guys already. Problem is, we don't have any rail lines to our front line against the Russians. I'm gonna get that light cruiser destroyed. I think that was actually a light cruiser that was made in the Ottoman Empire. They didn't have much in the way of shipyards, but I'm pretty sure that one was. Okay. Minsk will have rebels. Vitebsk, Polta, yeah. All right. Um, Mexico, are they even on the map? Mexico is not even on the map in the game, so I don't know how convincing them to join us would help. Furthermore, I don't want to do the whole Zimmerman telegram thing. That doesn't sound like a fun game to play. Can I send Lenin yet? I don't think so, Tortuga. Is that a thing that I can do eventually? Uh, yeah, the Gobin stayed in uh, Turkish service for a very long time. All right, guys. Uh, it is June of 1915. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and end this one. Uh, the war is going really well. I made a mistake that may result in Belgium falling, uh, but in any event, things are going pretty well. Uh, the Eastern Front is good. The Italian Front might pose a challenge. There really seem to be a lot of Italian units around there, but we'll figure that out. I have every confidence in the world that the war seems to be going well, and, uh, you know, we'll see. But until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you once again for watching, and until next time, I'm out.